Welcome back to Live Darts. We're here at the NDA and Modus event in Skegness, and we've got two times world champion with us, Dennis Priestley. Dennis, first of all, how are you keeping? Because not many darts fans see you out and about these days. I'm keeping well. Uh, yeah, no, no problems. Um, probably early part of the year, I'd uh, had uh, bronchitis, acute bronchitis. Took eight, took three or four weeks to get shut of, and uh, not normally uh, takes that long with me. But uh, yeah, it was set me back a bit, but I'm okay now. Are you enjoying the exhibition circuit? Still yeah, trying competitive yeah, darts? It's nice to yeah get about and uh, and meeting people. How are the darts going? Oh, not very good, but uh, I keep persisting. It's, it's just uh, inconsistency now. Again, we know you follow the darts because you went to the Premier League. Do you still watch it all the time as well on TV? I, I, I do watch it a little bit. I'm not uh, I'm not fully tuned in 24, 24 hours, you know, seven days a week. But I, I watch a bit and try and keep up best I can. Back in 1992 when the split happened, obviously you found the member. Could you ever imagine from where it was there to where it is now? Did you ever think that that could happen? Well, I, I knew it could only get better, but I didn't expect it getting as good as what uh, what it's turned out. Uh, the money's tremendous. Um, it gives you a reason to get up in the morning and practice, doesn't it? I just wish I was 40 years younger. As I say, that was part of my next question. Would you like to play on these big 10,000-seater arenas and... Well, I have done. I've uh, I was I played in Premier League uh, second season. Uh, then I got ill with prostate cancer. Uh, yeah, I played in front of uh, them sort of crowds. Yeah. Again, rivalries talked about in the sport. Obviously, you had a great rivalry with Phil back in the day, and then we saw I like, lost the characters and things like that. We seem to be developing now. What's your take on the modern game and the way it is? Uh, it seems fine. I mean, obviously. Uh, Playing in the big arenas, and there's, uh, you know, there's, don't forget when we first started, we was used to uh, having quite decent order. Uh, we we was the first ones what had to uh, try and get used to uh, all the noise. Whereas the new lads coming in, they know what to expect. They they know no different. Uh, it was difficult first off to get used to uh, the noise, but uh, we did, and we had, that's that's the price we had to pay for. Uh, the, the money what's come into the game. Did you prefer the best of order or did you prefer the... I like the best of order. Is that just because um, just you can concentrate just, uh, better? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, my game were all about concentration. Um, where I lost it uh, was probably mentally anyway. Um, after so long, you know, 10 years nearly at top and uh, the mental mental side of it. When you look back through your career, obviously Lakeside title won the very first PDC World title. Are they the two standout moments in your career or is there something else that you look back on fondly as well? Well, I always look back on the Windmill World Masters when I won that because that was the best darts I ever played in a semi and a final. They were both um, 100 plus averages. One was a 35 point something per dart and, and the other one was a 34 point something a dart. And, uh, you know, that was that was consistency at its very best. When, I mean, they talk about 100 averages now, blase, you know, being blase about it, but then there were few and far between. Is that a way, the way the board and the technology has moved on? Because obviously you had to play with huge wires and staples in. Well, I suppose, yeah, I mean, obviously modern technology, it's, and, and it... And, um, and it looks better anyway with, without big staples and things. I, I mean, they're a nice board. MVG, obviously dominating or has done recently. Mm. Where do you think he stands in the whole scheme of things? Obviously, his rivalry with Phil is always compared. Where do you see the two of them? Well, there's a hell of a long way to go to uh, to do to do what Phil Taylor's done. I mean, obviously, his averages are proving slightly better, and, and some some people will always think that uh, that's the uh, benchmark, the the averages. But to do what Phil Taylor's done over over 20 year plus. Um, I'd be absolutely gobsmacked if uh, if Michael Van Gerwen achieved it. I know a lot of people hold you responsible for awakening Phil Taylor, beating him in that first final. Phil says it himself that yeah. he never wanted to experience that again. So the darting world's got to thank you for something and then not yeah. in another way. Yeah, I've said that many times that uh, I awoke in the sleeping giant. Again, 2014, when you retired, did you know it was time? Because obviously Raymond's retiring at the end of the yeah, year. Yeah, I knew... Um, to be fair, if, the, if 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 there'd have been money in game, I probably would have called it a day. Probably after after the last final I played in 2000, but there wasn't. I mean, I was 50 at that time. There wasn't much else I could do. Uh, 
I mean, you know, obviously the exhibition circuit, but uh, I just kept plugging on for as long as I could, to be for, to be quite honest. And the way that the tour is now, it's it's relentless for these well, that, for these young yeah. players. Would you have done the tour in full in your heyday? Or would you have picked and choose a bit like some of them do now? Um, well, it's it, it's a lot more condensed than it was even four years ago when I packed in, and uh, I'd have had to have, uh, I'd have picked and choose. But if I'd have been in my twenties, I wouldn't have picked and choose. I mean, it's what we all dreamt of uh, playing week in week out. You know, we we was playing on TV in December and probably not on TV again until four or five months after. And that's the reason the, the averages and the players are better is because they're competitive more or less every weekend. Match play is also on the horizon. I know that you like the Winter Gardens as a venue, fond memories there. Mm, yeah. What makes the Winter Gardens special compared to the Well, others? obviously it's the building and the atmosphere and the closeness and I mean it's a lot better than arenas. Uh, I've, I've, never, I've never liked Ali Pali to be honest, but uh, there you go. You've, You've got to play on what stage they put you on. Dennis, thank you very much for taking time out to speak to us here at Live Darts. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you very you. much. Cheers.